This video is part two of a series we're making on 300 dental anatomy facts that if you study and memorize, you're going to do really good on this part of the boards. And this is part two. It's going to be on the incisors. Okay, so picking up on point number 40, you'll get some questions on uh, the function of teeth and the function of the incisors is primarily for biting. The maxillary central has the greatest facial lingual axial inclination. So this is kind of like a cross section here of a denture, but um, it shows the ridge here and the central is obviously very axial incli axially inclined and um, coming off of that ridge right there. Okay, the maxillary central has the greatest cervical curvature on the mesial of any other tooth in the mouth. Okay, so review time on the CEJ, because you can get a couple different questions on uh, the CEJ. So when we go through this, I want you to use the maxillary central incisor as a model um, for uh, how the CEJ dips. So the CEJ dips deeper on anterior teeth than posterior teeth, and we're gonna remember it's anterior because the maxillary central is an anterior tooth. The CEJ dips deeper on maxillary teeth than mandibular, and remember we're thinking of the central incisor on the upper, so that's going to remind us it's maxillary teeth that the CEJ is dipping deeper on. And then the mesial side of the tooth and the distal, just imagine, you know, the two centrals lined up next to each other right down the middle of the mouth, right on the mesial side. It's going to be the dipping the deepest. And then again here, the greatest is on the mesial of the maxillary central incisor. Maxillary incisors are the only anterior tooth that are wider mesiodistally than facio-lingually. So we've got a picture of that right here. And then maxillary central incisors have the greatest mesiodistal crown dimension of any anterior tooth. And so you guys have to be very careful when you're taking this test. You know, pay very close attention to um, what they're asking because they could just throw a little anterior in there and it'd be kind of hard to, it'd be easy to miss that. So pay attention. Are they asking about the anterior teeth? Are they asking of the posterior teeth or of every tooth in the mouth? The maxillary central has measurements that are nearly identical for the inciso cervical versus the mesiodistal. This is another area that you have to be very careful about. You know, you have to be very aware of the dimensions they're asking you about because you know you could very easily get tripped up if you assume they're asking one dimension and they're actually actually asking another. So we'll come to another question later on that uh, covers something like that again. The contact between a maxillary central and the lateral incisor makes the lingual embrasure larger than the facial. And remember, that's um, pretty typical for most of the teeth. And then the incisal embrasure between the maxillary centrals is smaller than between the central and the lateral. So if you look right here, you can see it's pretty small. It's incisal embrasure compared to between the central and the lateral. The maxillary, so this is on the laterals now. We're moving on to the maxillary laterals. And, you know, these, you'll see a theme with these teeth that anytime there's kind of like a variant, variability or uniqueness or dysfunction, a lot of times it's going to be the maxillary lateral. So the maxillary lateral has the most crown shape variation. Um, except for third molars, the maxillary lateral incisor exhibits the most deviation in crown morphology. And so you notice the difference here is we're asking about crown morphology versus shape. The maxillary lateral incisor most often is in abnormal relation and contact with adjacent teeth. 
And other than third molars, the tooth that is most often congenitally missing is going to be the maxillary lateral incisor. The non-molar tooth that most frequently has uh, a mesial and a distal pulp horn is going to be the maxillary central incisor. So I must have shimmied these in here a little bit late. So even though it says maxillary laterals, we're still we're, we're talking about centrals here. So the non-molar tooth that most frequently has a mesial and distal pulp horn is the maxillary central incisor. And then the non-molar tooth that is least likely to have a bifurcated root is the maxillary central incisor. Because remember the lateral can sometimes have two canals, but the central pretty much never does. Okay, back to the maxillary laterals. The anterior tooth that most likely would demonstrate lingual pit carries is the maxillary lateral incisor, and that is mostly in due, mostly because of the distal lingual groove right here. So if you come over here, this is a, an occlusal view of the centrals, of the upper centrals, and the laterals, and you see this little distal lingual groove right here. Um, that's an anatomical feature that can complicate root planing. You can get plaque and calculus developing in there, and it can be hard to clean.